Don't ask me why when I was going through Zigthought 3's free shader collection for ideas on topics that might be fun to cover, this one caught my eye of all things, but if you've ever wanted to make it look like your game is being engraved on metal, then you might be interested in this emboss effect. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about more shader things you can do in Game Maker. So embossing! Uh, I think what you see on the screen is pretty self-explanatory, but if you've ever wanted to make it look like your game has been chiseled or hammered or dented, I'm not a metaller, just I don't know words, but if your game is taking place on a flat metal sheet, then you should continue watching this video that you clicked on, because that's what we're going to do today. I feel like this is getting increasingly silly. Anyway, uh, we are going to make it look like this image has some relief or some varying height to it or some physical texture to it, and the way that we're going to do that is that we're going to look for the gradient and the brightness of, um, of a pixel from one pixel to another. And if the region of the texture that we're sampling from is lighter on top than it is on the bottom, then we're going to lighten the pixel and it's going to look like there is, um, like there's some outward relief into the, um, into the light. And if the region of the texture that we're sampling from is darker on the top than it is on the bottom, or in other words, if there's a, um, like a negative gradient in brightness across the texture, then we're going to darken it instead and it's going to look like there is some uh, 3D relief that puts the uh, that puts our surface out of direct light, so it's going to be darker. So uh, let me close that sample project. Uh, my um, my tutorial project is pretty simple, uh, as I've been doing with a bunch of my other image processing effects. I've got some parameters for size of the emboss effect and the strength of the emboss effect. Uh, those are being fed into the um, into the shader as a uniform. Uh, we're also feeding in the resolution of our texture. Um, as we've done on a number of other occasions, as a uniform. Hey. I'm going to start off not really making use of these size or these strength properties, but I'll get to that towards the end of the video. Anyway, this is our initial setup. It's just a pass-through fragment shader. We're not doing anything, um, we're not doing anything fancy yet. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, which has been the, uh, the first thing that I've done in a number of these image effect, image filter, uh, shaders, is I'm going to be figuring out the texel height and width by taking 1.0 and dividing that by the resolution. Uh, taking the reciprocal of the resolution for the, um, for the texel size. And that's just going to allow us to, um, to look at the adjacent texels and the texture that we're sampling from. We really are getting to the point where I do wish the game maker would just apply us the resolution and or texel size to a shader, um, just automatically because it's something that I use so, so often, but that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna actually comment out that. Um, that line right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say vec3 color is going to equal a vector3 of 0 0.5 on all three, uh, on all three components. So that's going to be 0.5 red, 0.5 green, 0.5 blue. Uh, as a color that is going to be about 50% gray. And from that 50% gray, I am going to subtract the red, green, and blue values that can be found on the base texture sampler uh, at a position of our v underscore v texture coordinate and I'm going to subtract um, I'm going to subtract one texel so I'm going to be looking at the texel that is to the upper left of the one that we're sampling from uh, the upper left of the one that's being processed in the shader right now I can say texel.x texel.y or uh, maybe a little bit more concisely just v underscore v text cord minus texel because those are both vector twos and I'm just going to want the dot RGB of that because this is a vector three using only the dot RGB, not using the alpha. Uh, secondly, I'm going to do something very similar, but I'm going to instead add the value found at texture 2D of uh, GM underscore base texture and our texture coordinate plus the texel. So we're going to subtract the RGB of the texel to the upper left, and we're going to add the RGB of the texel to the bottom right. And that is going to give us a little gradient across our image. Um, if I were to just stop here and say gl.fragcolor.rgb is going to equal uh, color, and then I guess we can also say like gl.fragcolor.alpha equals that.alpha if we want. Uh, this is going to give us a grayscale image, or mostly grayscale image anyway, but we're going to see a little bit of a, a little bit of relief in here with some, uh, some brighter areas, some uh, darker areas. We're honestly like 80% of the way there, but we can see that it's not entirely grayscale yet. And to do that, 
uh, we're just going to turn color back into a grayscale value. And the easy way to do that is, of course, color equals vec3, color.red, color.green. Uh, sorry, I want to add those together, plus color.blue. Um, all that divided by 3.0. Uh, if you really want to do it the quote unquote proper way, you can use the luma weights, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say it's like 0.3 for red, point like 6 for green, and 0.1 for blue, uh, more or less. And this is going to, as I like to call it in my notes, re-grayscalize the image. That's a fun word to say. We should make it a word. And now the entire image is now um, a shade of gray of varying, varying brightnesses. No, uh, no color in sight. So we've uh, we've imprinted this entire image on a um, on a sheet of steel or something like that. So that's cool. That's the basic emboss effect. Um, if I wanted to commit that change to GitHub, I could. Uh, there are a few other properties that I said I might want to make use of. For example, the size and the strength of the um, of the effect. I want to say if you opened up like an image in Photoshop and if you applied a filter like this to the image, then you would get um, similar parameters that you could tweak. So uh, this is fairly easy. If you want to affect the strength of the emboss effect, we could take that uniform. We could take that um, that setting and just multiply the values that we sampled from the neighboring pixels.rgb uh, by that strength value. And as a result of this, uh, we can have the ability to increase or decrease the strength value. And we can increase that to make the effect a lot more, I guess I would call it sharp. Uh, there's um, or maybe roughness. This looks a lot rougher than it did before. And if I were to decrease the strength instead, back below where we started, then we would see that we have a very, uh, very. I guess we could call it lightly, like a weathered effect. It looks like there's been quite a bit of erosion on this um, on the sh on the sheet of metal that's had this picture stamped into it. So if you want to give your embossed effect a uh, bit of a weathered look, you can do that. And the uh, the size, the size parameter. If you want the um, if you want the area over which the gradient is uh, sampled from to be a little bit bigger, uh, you could simply multiply the texel resolution by that size. And now, when I run the example, uh, if I were to increase the size, we can see that the lines are getting a lot wider because again, the area over which we're looking for for um, for the gradient is getting a lot bigger. And now the uh, the individual lines look a lot wider. You could uh, combine that with the strength value to really make it look like we're uh, maybe a little bit less uh, creating this image with like a, a fine touch, like a artistic hair, and maybe more with a uh, like beating the sheet of metal with a sledgehammer or something like that. All right, I think that's getting pretty extreme. It's pretty hard to see what this image is right now. Anyway, also if I make the uh, if I make the size parameter too small. We're eventually just gonna like white out, aren't we? Or at least we would if I did not have the texture filtering turned on. I meant to turn that off before I started this video. Um, if I turn texture filtering off and just go with nearest neighbor uh, texture filtering, then if I go below about 0.5, then um, the offset for each pixel is still gonna be the same pixel and we're just going to be sampling like the same exact color from, um, from every pixel and we're not going to uh, we're not going to see any gradient at all. So if you want to make the size value really small, make sure to uh, make sure to turn on texture filtering there. All right. So that's the emboss effect. Uh, I don't really have too much more that I want to do here. You can, and I thought about doing this. Uh, you can like change the angle at which uh, the like imaginary light is shining on the image from. Like if you didn't want it to be upper left, lower right, you could. You could do some magic with rotations to sample from a different location and look for a different gradient, but I tried that and I didn't think it really added that much to it for the amount of time that it added to the video, so I'm gonna not do that right now. Uh, feel free to extend this on your own and see what crazy artistic, crazy artistic effects you can achieve. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of this video. I like to post videos about the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, from shader nonsense to 3D nonsense to whatever else I feel like on any given day. So if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. 
you should all go check out the Steam page for Wizardux, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Squarecrow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Hull, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.